Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Big Monkey, AKA Great Ape Vegeta. And he is a big boy. He's so heavy that my poor little turntable is screeching and grinding right now. I don't know if you guys can hear it, probably not, but it is not wanting to have him on there. Uh, so this thing is, it's a very interesting release because it is unlike anything we've seen from them so far, especially in the Dragon Ball line. It is very, very unique. And it does some things, as you might expect, very well. Really exceptionally well. And then it does a few other things, which I'm sure you guys will all be able to predict. Go ahead and put it in the comment section right now what you think the biggest fault for this figure is. But it does one thing exceptionally poorly. And I can understand why. We're going to talk about it, but that doesn't make it necessarily a good... I mean, it's not a good thing. It doesn't make it an okay thing even. It's a bad thing. So we're going to talk about it, but there's a lot to like still. So let's go ahead and get this big guy off the stand before it breaks and take a closer look. Alrighty, this guy stands. Oh no, I thought I wasn't going to need it. Well, here's what we're going to do. To the top of his head, not his little hair spike, 12 inches. <laughs> I'm cheating. But you can see it's very close to 12 inches. If you count the hair spike, it's like 12 and a quarter, a little bit more. And it, if you really try to straighten them up, you'd get a little bit more. But this will give you an idea. About 30 centimeters, 30 and a half centimeters, 12 inches, right around. He's a big boy. And we'll do a quick size comparison. Where did I put my Goku? There you go. Here's Goku and here's Big Monkey. He's about the size, actually almost exactly the size of his arm. And if you want to see a height comparison, there you go. If I do it like this, you won't really see Goku. He, well, that doesn't look good. He's about up to the crotch. So this guy is humongous. He's a big guy. And the sculpt work is super duper. It is great. It has a very nice anime aesthetic to it. I like the face a lot. I like the way the entire armor is all battle damaged and chipped up and it just looks really good. A lot of detail went into it and that's awesome. The fur looks good. They nailed the sculpt. I like it a bunch. Um, oh, by the way, I guess I should mention it's not even close to in scale. In case anybody wasn't sure about that and was wondering if you've ever seen the anime or I suppose the manga as well, it's not even close to scale. Just for instance, that's one of the accessories, and that's Goku in his hands. That's how big he should be. So Goku's about a third size, a third scale here uh, compared to the figure arts. So he's not even close to in scale. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but just wanted to get that out of the way since I did the comparison and didn't mention it. Okay, so as far as the aesthetic goes, I love the sculpt. That's fine. There's a few articulation types of things that cause the uh, aesthetic to have an issue. I'm just going to talk about that in the articulation. Uh, now here's the thing, and if you guys didn't guess yet, now's your last chance to guess what the big issue is, and you probably should have been able to figure it out by now. The paint on this figure is virtually non-existent, almost literally non-existent. Almost every panel on here is molded plastic. Every piece. So these are molded in yellow, this is molded in white, this is molded in yellow, this is molded in white, this is molded in blue. I believe the gloves are a separate piece. They should be as far as I can tell they are. I can't find anything off the top of my head other than the teeth, like the mouth and the eyes. But even the eyes are questionable. They may not be painted. I haven't looked that close. But I think that's it. I believe other than maybe the face parts, which obviously the mouth is painted, I believe every single other part of this is molded plastic. Which is good in one way, in that it's uniform. It's all the same color, and that would be great. And it's bad in one way, in that it has a zero detail, other than the sculpt. Which is, like I said, awesome. No paint work on this figure at all. And I get that it's big, but it was also very expensive, and I think... And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong based on your estimation. You guys can let me know what you think in general about this. We're already paying out the butt for this figure. And I don't think it would have been unreasonable to charge more and make it painted. Even basic paints, like just put a wash basically everywhere, put a wash on it. That's it. You know, something to accentuate this sculpt. Like there's tons of parts where it's clearly actually ripped through, sculpt wise, ripped through the cloth and you should be seeing brown. Up here, especially on the gloves, there, I mean, it's just all over the place that he is severely lacking paint. And we knew that going in, but it's still an issue. His nose has a little bit there, his mouth and his eyes. The eyes do look painted. So I would have just paid more. I mean, we were already paying a lot. 
add another 50 bucks onto it, make it painted. Unless they're gonna do a special version, but this seems like too high of a price point for them to do a special paint, paint version. Uh, that's my guess, we'll see. But yeah, it is just solid plastic. And if it wasn't for the incredibly detailed sculpt, this thing would look cheap as hell. And it still does look cheap to some extent, obviously, because all of the torn spots, all of the torn spots, are not painted. So it does have a very cheap aesthetic to it in some ways. And that's really unfortunate because it was expensive and it is the kind of thing that's gonna be the centerpiece of a display because he's humongous. So I, I'm very, I get that they didn't want to spend the money on it, but I don't think that that necessarily would have been the right choice. And there's no way to say, obviously, we don't have anything to compare against, but, or even like right here, this is a good example. So they used this knee as a battle damaged area, okay? So the knee itself is just all brown and then the torn parts are above and below it, but also on the side. So they have torn cloth here that's just painted brown. I mean, not painted, it's not painted at all. It's just brown, it's not painted blue. Same thing on this side. Jeez, he's so heavy. Same thing, stop falling over in my hand. On this side, there's more blue that isn't painted. It's just, it really makes him stand out as not being a premium release, even though he cost a ton and is big. So I don't, I just really, no paint. We should have at least gotten the minimum of painting the side parts of the knee blue, where they're supposed to be cloth. At least something like that. You get what I'm saying? That is very bothersome to me. Uh, even if it costs an extra 20 bucks, even if it costs an extra 50 bucks, I think it would have been something people would be happy to have and would have paid for it. This is already well out of the realm of a casual collector. So I don't know what they were thinking. All right, so aesthetically, I'm only gonna give it a seven and that's generous with this severe and obvious glaring lack of paint. That's just not, it doesn't look that good. The sculpt is great, paints don't exist. All right, so as far as accessories go, we have an interchangeable faceplate with the messed up eye, and that's pretty cool. My faceplate does have difficulty staying in his head though. Let me know if you guys have that same problem. We do have an alternate tailpiece, which is the cutoff tail, but also zero paint. They even have like the little bone chunk showing, but zero paint on there, so that blows. As far as hands go, we have the two fist hands, we have two open hands, we have one pointing finger hand, and then we have the two hands where he is holding a baby Goku, which does have some paint on it and actually looks pretty nice. And then lastly, we have a black display stand, which does help him balance because he does have some issues with that. Uh, I don't know that it had to be quite as humongous as it is, but it is there and it works well enough. And it also lets you attach a little miniature Yajirobe, uh, which makes sense from the story. And Yajirobe's done well enough, but uh, I think I, my personal preference is budget from that big ass display stand in Yajirobe could have gone to paint. And we can balance them ourselves. And do we need Yajirobe? Probably not. I mean, it's not to scale anyway, so it's more of a novelty. That's my take, you guys can let me know what you think. So accessory wise, seven out of 10, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Just uh, nothing really special about it. Okay, so now it's time for the articulation which is not, uh, it's not bad. They did some things really nicely. Uh, the first thing I wanna talk about though, the neck leans back like that and then it leans forward. Okay, but when it's leaning forward because of the shape of the head, it doesn't really, like you can't get it to go that far forward. The range, let me put it back on. Well, I guess I'll show you this. We have a big ass ball hinge in here. For a figure this big and this awkward and clumsy, a double ball peg is what you needed. The head doesn't weigh enough that you need ratcheting, but this is ratcheted. Or at least it's really tight and it sounds like it's ratcheted. Maybe it's not technically, but you don't need it because it's just a head. As long as the head doesn't fall off, you can pretty much get away with anything. So when you bring the neck forward, as I was mentioning, it just scrunches the head down and makes him look like he has no neck at all. It's not actually looking down. Do you see that? You bring the neck forward and it, it doesn't, you can't actually make him look down. It just gives him no neck. It looks bad. Okay, so you have to leave the neck back and then you have to pose the head around on there, but then it's very, very limited. So there's not much you can do. You can open the jaw, but once you do that, you definitely can't lean the head forward and have him look down, which you need to do because he's humongous. So you definitely have some limitations in the neck there. <sighs> That's pretty disappointing. Now for the shoulder pads, they're connected in the back here. 
and the arms are connected on this big butterfly which is really ugly because there's a big hinge here which works nicely and that'll be great for poses because you can see you can actually bring the arm pretty far forward so if you need to do that you can do that and it's not going to look terrible from the front but it is just huge cavernous gapping which is understandable because that's all you could do you couldn't have stuff in there so that's fine i don't mind that so much but i don't like the fact that when his arms are forward it's hard to hide these at least on this side it's okay on this side i have had very little luck maneuvering this around to hide it without tucking the armor like all the way in which i guess is okay but it's not really what it's supposed to look like the armor's supposed to be out like that and then you end up it just i don't know it could be refined a little bit more they already didn't spend any money on paint just refine it a little bit it's very hard to hide that not a big deal again I'm, I'm i'm going at this in the sense that this is a very expensive release all right and i think they could have done a little bit better in some ways okay so the cool thing is the butterfly joint does come all the way forward and we have a vertical rotation on that it's just a swivel on the bottom of that ball hinge so that's good it's a functional joint for sure don't get me wrong it works it's just finicky and can be very ugly so it's a good thing overall it just has issues like see anything other than a head-on view and even then it's it's very disjointed. look how far out his shoulder is like if you want to use the butterfly joint it's gonna look pretty strange so yeah it's gonna take some creative photography for sure for those of you who are into that sort of thing now you do get ratcheted shoulder which brings the arm all the way out to the side and that is just wonderful it's lovely it's great no problem at all there that is super duper you do of course get your full rotation but the shoulder pad gets in the way so that's going to be fairly limited there bicep swivel is pretty much standard double jointed elbow it's pretty much standard a little bit better than 90 he's very bulky so that's okay wrists are on a ball hinge they pop out constantly the hands pop off of that wrist all the time if you don't have it in the center and you don't rotate it just right it can pop off so it's kind of a nuisance it doesn't it's not like they're going to fall off on their own but it's definitely a pain in the butt as you're trying to pose this guy uh i don't think it needed to be that way like i get that it's technically better looking but you don't get that much range anyway so let's just not have the hands pop off like there i wasn't trying to do that just then so uh, again it's a nuisance not a deal breaker but a nuisance i have a feeling <laughs> I have a feeling, I haven't seen any reviews for this guy yet, I know they're out there, but I don't watch them. I have a feeling most people are going to say how awesome this thing is because it's unique and it's a big Vegeta and everything like that. Uh, but, you know, that's not what we do here. We go ahead and talk about all of the good and the bad. And unfortunately, when you have a high price point, the bad stands out even more. Alright, so for the torso, it leans back that far. Which is not that far. If it can go farther, I don't know how to make it do it going forward it can go that far it's also very floppy I cannot get it to go any farther I can't lift it up for a hinge I can't get it to do anything side to side very limited rotation very limited down here at the waist what do we have we can lean it forward more a little bit more forward there but it doesn't go back any farther so you get just a little bit more range and then side to side nope and no rotation so the torso is very very limited on this guy unless mine's just really stuck but it doesn't feel like that it just feels really limited like really limited so that kind of blows for the hips we have ratchets which is a good thing and he can get the legs out really far and they look good so that's awesome going forward really good range ratchets going forward again that's all good that's really nice thigh swivel that's all nice no problems there double jointed knee it is ratcheted and it looks good so that's good and then for the ankles they did something i really like there's a little bit of a slip joint in here so you can leave them closed in like that or you can pull them out it's not a ton well i guess you could some might say that's a ton but it is a slip joint so you can see that's with it out and that's with it in so i eh, i don't know your de definition of ton for this type of measurement is totally up to you <laughs> but either way you get awesome ankle range and they're ratcheted which technically ratchets aren't great for joints because they give you limited spots that you can use it's either fixed here fixed here fixed here that kind of thing but it also tends to be better for something like this when he might be too heavy for your standard type of joint so that's good really good range forward and back obviously you can rotate it around for an ankle rocker 
And the shape of the boots is gonna limit that some, but it still works well enough. So the ankles are pretty good. Toe hinge, eh, it's all right. It's not gonna do much, but it's there, it's okay. And then lastly, I guess the tail is on a little ball hinge. So yeah, it's not, so here, here's the thing. As far as articulation goes, some of it's really good, some of it's not so good. A lot of the engineering's nice and creative, but then some of it's just not refined as much as it probably should be. So I'm gonna go with a seven only for the articulation on this guy. I get that he's big and bulky, but also because he's big and bulky, you have lots more to, to work with, so to speak. You can, you can get away with a lot more, especially with the armor and it could have been a lot better. And so that's, that's the problem with a thing like this. It's a very high ticket item, especially for a line where most of the pieces sit around 50 bucks. This guy costs a whole lot more than that. Yes, he's bigger, but it's still a high ticket item. So, or big ticket item. So you have a certain level of expectation. I personally really enjoy having it, but from a review standpoint, there's so much wrong with it that it's, it, it's, I don't, it's, I don't even know how to describe it. It's weird, like, it's so close to being awesome, but then the lack of paint is just devastating as far as I'm concerned. And the minimal articulation, that's also pretty not great. Uh, I don't know, guys. Let me, I, I'm very curious what other people are thinking about it. I'm guessing a lot of people are very smitten by the fact that it's Big Monkey Vegeta. But it's still also an expensive collectible. Is this worthy of being in your collection as a center point, centerpiece? I don't know. Would I prefer to have a Purunga, maybe? I think so. It would have made more sense for it to be out of scale than to have Big Vegeta. But, or a better Shen Shenron? I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think about that. So anyway, my final verdict on this guy, for figure art standards, including the price point and everything, it's only a seven out of 10. It's really not impressive. If it wasn't for it being big, it's really not impressive at all. The only thing it has going for it is being big. The novelty of it. You get what I'm saying? It's not actually a particularly good figure. It is a decent figure, and that's about it. And that's unfortunate. I like it, but that's the that's the truth of it. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to because I have new videos out just about every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.